Hi, Passive here, and in this tutorial I'm going to show you my advanced method for creating a 3D lenticular image from a photograph in Photoshop CS4 Extended. I was inspired to make this after watching similar tutorials on the Russell Brown show. They're well worth checking out. There are two techniques that I know of used in Photoshop to create 3D images. One, by creating a depth map for your image and the other creating 3D layers out of your picture. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Depth maps can be relatively easy to make, have varying depths, but each portion of the screen can only have one depth associated with it. Layers can have multiple depths, but each layer is flat in 3D. Because of this, I'm going to use a combination of the two. But first, a little explanation on why just using a depth map isn't quite good enough. In a 3D lenticular image, there exists several views separated horizontally, thereby giving us the 3D effect. When viewing such an image, we can virtually look around objects slightly, like looking around a pillar for example. If we've used a depth map to model the 3D-ness of a pillar, the back of that pillar will stretch out behind it giving an ugly distorted effect, a bit like this. So, what we're going to do is to divide the picture into two parts. One background layer that will have a depth map made for it, and two, a number of 3D layers. So the first step is to decide what goes into the background. The way I do this is that anything that you can look around comes a layer and everything else is in the background. So, Here's the example picture I'm going to demonstrate this technique on. I think it's fairly obvious on this picture that this pillar here and this apple are the kind of things you could slightly look around and see behind. So they'll become our layers. The rest of the image, obviously you can't see behind, so that's going to become the background layer. Go through each part of the image you want to be a layer, uh, starting from the layer that you think is nearest to the screen. Cut it out, paste it into a new layer, and then fill in that part of the image on the background as a solid colour. I use the polygonal lasso tool on this example, just to be quick. Here we go. I'm going to cut out this pillar first, just very roughly. So, copy that, create a new layer and paste as you can see then using that selection in the background layer fill it in as a solid color the next layer to cut out is the apple but as you can see there's a large section which is just black because there wasn't any information in the picture so the next stage is to create the best estimate of what that part of the image would look like. In this case you can use for example the clone tool to copy bits of the existing apple over this black section. Now you don't need to worry about making this too accurate because you only see this part when you look around the pillar in the 3D final image. So a rough estimate is fine. As you can see, I'm just kind of taking the sort of basic textures from the surrounding parts of the apple and just copying them into the black section. As I say, it doesn't need to be that accurate. And you can obviously spend more time doing this than I am. Use your imagination. Now, admittedly, that doesn't look quite like the centre of an apple, but for our purposes, I think it'll do just fine. So again, the same procedure before, we need to cut this out of the background layer and paste it into a new layer. So, again with the same tool. Again, being quite rough. Okay, copy, new layer, paste it in. And with that selection in the background layer, fill in in a solid colour. 
That's our layers done. Now to finish the background. Obviously, there's a large section here which has been erased. So we need to use the same technique that we did on the apple to fill in this missing information. So again with the clone tool, I'm just going to basically fill this in. Obviously, if I spent some more time, I'd try and match up these seams, but this is just an example. And then the floor, let's see. You could use the perspective distortion tools to make this a little bit more accurate rather than this quick example. There we go, that'll do for our purposes.